this year, the Bard Music Festival focuses on a composer who needs really no introduction uh, to Igor Stravinsky, who arguably is the most famous composer of the 20th century. And um, certainly the name that is uh, the most household of composers' names from that century. So he became famous in part because in 1913, 100 years ago, um, the Ballet Rite of Spring premiered in Paris and because there was a lot of odd dancing and the music also sounded so seemingly new and uh, revolutionary that uh, there was a kind of a riot and scandal which really made his fame. And the Rite of Spring proves the adage that uh, there's no such thing as bad publicity. And so uh, Stravinsky uh, you know, became famous overnight. He went on to have a career in France, ironically, although a Russian emigre exile, he became France's leading composer until 1939, where he, when he came to the United States, where he played a fantastically influential role in American musical life as an American citizen and as an American composer until his death in the early 70s. He had three careers, if you will, um, a Russian career, a French career, which was also spent some of it in, in transition in Switzerland, and then an American career. We're going to look at Stravinsky in the context of these three worlds from which he came, the Russian world. So, for example, we'll uh, play the Rite of Spring against the ballet score that his rival, Maximilian Steinberg, who became Shostakovich's teacher, who stayed in the Soviet Union, the ballet he wrote called The Metamorphosis. We'll compare Stravinsky to Lyadov, who originally was supposed to write Firebird, but never got around to it. We'll show Stravinsky in relationship to the aesthetic of his teacher, Rimsky Korsakov. Uh, and then we'll move to the French context, to um, his relationship to a whole generation of younger and slightly older French composers, including Debussy and Ravel, down to Poulenc and um, Les Six, and the years in Paris, and uh, complicated relation to Prokofiev and to Russian emigres. And then we come to the United States, where we'll also show beginning with his lectures at Harvard in 1939, and uh, his work in America and his uh, experimentation with 12-tone uh, uh, compositional methods, uh, his engagement with Hollywood and not a totally successful flirtation with Hollywood as he lived in Los Angeles, and his connection to the emigre community. The festival, in some way, um, this year, frames the question of music and the aesthetic uh, in the context of two periods of enormously cataclysmic, if you will, violence. The First World War, which you can include in that the revolution of 1917 in Russia, and the other, the Second World War. And uh, how does an artist steeped in a tradition of music making from the 19th century adjust? And that's something audiences have worried about, particularly because many audiences still feel somewhat uncomfortable with the music of the 20th century. And uh, Stravinsky is a terrific window on how you can build a rapprochement between the audience and the very fabulous legacy of 20th century music.